हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर सविता शर्मा फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ अल्ट्रा हाई वैक्यूम दैट इज यूजिंग थिन फिल्म वैक्यूम कोटिंग यूनिट फ्रॉम द पेपर थिन फिल्म साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट अस सी वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इन दिस मॉड्यूल first of all we are going to learn about the thin film coating units secondly we will learn the ultra high vacuum requirement in the growth of thin films then we will see the different types of deposition techniques of thin films and in the end we'll see the advantages and disadvantages of various deposition techniques so to start with let us have a brief introduction what are thin films thin films are low dimensional materials they are generally lying in the thickness range of few nanometers to several micrometers the production of ultra high vacuum that is ultra high vacuum means of the order of 10 to the power minus 6 tor is an essential requirement for the production of high quality thin films high quality thin films are the prerequisite for the manufacturing of many electronic and optical devices there are several pumps available in the market to create the vacuum of desired amount generally these pumps are categorized in two categories four vacuum pumps and high vacuum pumps the example of four vacuum pump is rotary pump and that of high vacuum pumps are turbo molecular pump or tmp and diffusion pump now there are various techniques which we use these using these pumps to produce ultra high vacuum in order to deposit high quality thin films that shows the types of vacuum thin film coating units these are the types of coating units in which a thin film is deposited inside a vacuum so the first one is the pulse laser deposition technique the second one is the thermal evaporation the third one is the sputtering the fourth one is the e beam electron beam evaporation fifth one is molecular beam epitaxy and the last one is pcvd or plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition technique pulse laser deposition pulse laser deposition or pld is a typical technique for the preparation of thin films of complex stoichiometry well controlled interfaces or multi layer structures in pld laser shots of the intense laser with specific wavelength and high energy are focused on the target of the material to be used for the deposition the energy of the laser should be high enough so that it can ablate the target material the deposition of the films can be performed under high vacuum conditions the required vacuum is achieved with the aid of two pumps the first one is a four vacuum pump that is the rotary pump required to create the base vacuum up to the order of 10 to the power minus 2 tor followed by a high vacuum pump that is turbo molecular pump which can create vacuum up to the order of 10 to the power minus 6 tor the full pld process can be portrayed by five stages which are as follows the first stage is the light absorption in the solid second one is the one dimensional plume expansion of the ablated material during 
लेजर इरेडिएशन थर्ड वन इज द फ्री थ्री डायमेंशनल एक्सपेंशन इन टू वैक्यूम और ए डायल्यूट बैकग्राउंड गैस फोर्थ वन इज द स्लोइंग डाउन एंड स्टॉपिंग ऑफ द प्लूम इन द बैकग्राउंड गैस द फिफ्थ स्टेज इज द कलेक्शन ऑफ अबलेटेड एटम्स ऑन ए सबस्ट्रेट एंड सब्सिक्वेंट फिल्म ग्रोथ The figure below shows the schematic of the PLD system a high power NDAG laser that is operating at the wavelength of 266 nanometer and having an energy of 100 millijoules is shown the deposition chamber is fitted with a turbo molecular pump which is of Pfeiffer company and creates a high vacuum of the order of 10 to the power minus 6 tor in the chamber also the chamber is equipped with a rotating target carousel which can accommodate 6 1 inch diameter targets this setup enables multi layer deposition of different materials on the same substrate without breaking the vacuum the substrate holder is available with pld controlled heater assembly for substrate heating up all six targets can be controlled externally via a microcontroller and can be programmed for the desired thickness of thin film by setting the number of laser shots and laser frequency so you can see in the figure the target holder laser input substrate holder target carousel control vacuum display gas flow controllers and the substrate temperature heater thermal evaporation thermal evaporation is a physical deposition technique as per the name the material to be deposited is brought in the vacuum phase by the virtue of thermal energy to the atoms of material in solid form and then these atoms are transferred to a cooler substrate from the heated source evaporation is achieved by joules heating by applying low voltage and high current the synthesis process needs to be carried out in a properly designed vacuum system that is under high vacuum environment vacuum of the order of 10 to the power minus 6 tor created by rotary and diffusion pump so as to avoid uncontrolled oxidation of source materials and final product as well as that of the components of the synthesis system mean free path of the particles also increases in vacuum systems which is often desired as it should be greater than the dimensions chamber and source to substrate distance under such conditions the transport of the material from the source to the substrate occurs by molecular beams sometimes reactive gases are used in certain cases of depositions in that cases it is useful first to evacuate the system to very low pressure so that the materials to be synthesized do not get contaminated by undesirable atoms and then pressurize the system to desired value by introducing the high purity gases in the synthesis chamber the illustrative layout of the thermal evaporation unit has been presented in the figure given on the next slide the given figure shows the illustrative layout of the thermal evaporation unit in which we can see the crystal oscillator for the thickness of the deposited film then there is copper coated samples then for example 
here we are showing the gold material that is to be evaporated which is kept in the tungsten molybdenum boat you can see the electrodes we can see the vacuum inlet and we can see the lt supply heating of the material can be carried out through some suitable filament crucible boat etc which are collectively called as evaporation source or crucible which is in intimate contact with the evaporant and is heated electrically evaporation sources are generally made of refractory materials such as tungsten molybdenum tantalum and niobium because they have a low vapor pressure at the evaporation temperature and low reactivity with the evaporant the thickness of the deposited thin film is monitored with the help of quartz crystal oscillator placed in the vicinity of the substrate the final thin film produced by evaporation technique is in general non stoichiometric because it is difficult to achieve conformal coverage during evaporation it is very likely that the compound used for evaporation dissociates before getting evaporated therefore evaporation technique for the thin film deposition has been suppressed in many instances or has been replaced in many instances by sputtering and cvd methods a hindiwack thermal evaporation system is shown in the figure given below it consists of a 4 inch oil based diffusion pump backed by a rotary pump to attain high vacuum of the order of 4 into 10 to the minus 6 star the vacuum system equipped with quartz crystal base thickness monitor to control the in situ thickness of the deposited thin film so let us study what is sputtering sputtering is a high energy fabrication method to produce thin films especially for obtaining stoichiometric thin films that is without changing the composition of the original material from target material target material may be some metal alloy ceramic or any composite material sputtering is also effective in producing non porous compact films sputtering is an efficient technique to deposit multi layer films for mirrors or magnetic films for spintronic applications atoms from a solid target source are ejected or sputtered via a process of momentum exchange inside the plasma by the action of high energy ions usually originating from some inert gas ambient like argon the ejected particles are then deposited or condensed on the surface of the substrate to produce a thin film so sputtering is this is how a vacuum coating techniques plasma the word which is taken from the greek word called plazein meaning to mold or to spread so plasma is an ionized gas that is considered to be a distinct phase of matter plasma is an ionized state of matter containing ions electrons and neutral species plasma is electrically conductive and is strongly influenced by electric and magnetic fields plasma is used to derive ionization creating a large number of ions and free electrons plasma is generated by applying direct current or alternating current voltages and a bias voltage is applied to the target to promote acceleration of ions inert gas ions like argon are made incident on the target at a very high energy depending on the energy of ions and the ratio of 
ion mass to that of target atoms, the ion target interaction can be a complex phenomena. That is, the kinetic energy of the impinging particle largely dictates what event would take place. Then the figure given here shows a schematic picture of various possibilities for the deposition of materials. One is interested in the sputtering yield, which is the number of ejected species per incident ion and increases with the energy and mass of the bombarding ions. Sputter yield for different elements with same incident ion having same energy varies in general. Therefore, for a target consisting of two or more than two different elements, one having more sputter yield is incorporated in more amount than the others. However, high sputter yield elements get depleted fast and the other elements make higher contribution. Thus, the stoichiometry is achieved in the deposited thin film. So, the figure given here shows the schematic picture of the possibilities of the fin or the phenomena occurring inside the sputtering chamber. Sputtering deposition can be carried out using direct current that is DC, alternative current or AC or radio frequency that is RF or magnetron sputtering. In general, the sputter yield is greatest with the following set of conditions. Number one, high atomic weight process gas. Number two, low atomic weight cathode material. And number three, low concentration of reactive gas species in the vessel. Argon is the most commonly employed process gas for sputter deposition process as it has high sputter yield for most metals. It is chemically inert and non-toxic and is relatively inexpensive compared with the other noble gases such as krypton and xenon. On the other hand, oxygen gas is known to react chemically with metals, forming metal oxides easily. Thus, Argon and oxygen gases are used in deposition of metals and metal oxide thin films respectively. The figure given here shows the electron beam evaporation setup or the schematic in which we can see a substrate holder, then the evaporated source material, molybdenum or graphite crucibles containing the source material. We can see an electron beam. Then there are magnets for focusing electron beam. Electron beam source is there. There is a vacuum system to create the vacuum inside the chamber. And there is a inlet for the cooling of the source materials using water cooling. And in the end there is E-beam power supply. Electron beam evaporation. Electron beam evaporation is an evaporation technique in which an accelerated beam of electrons from cathode is made to hit the target at a node leading to vaporization of target material. These vapors get condensed on the surface of substrate to form a thin film of target material. Tungsten filament is used as the source of electrons. This filament is heated by passing a high current through it, which leads to thermionic emission of electrons. These electrons are focused to form a beam by applying magnetic field. The beam then strikes the source material, which is placed in molybdenum or graphite crucible. The beam is swept across the surface of the source material to uniformly heat all of the material. The material is then evaporated and condenses over the substrate surface. EB evaporation is similar to thermal evaporation but has some advantages over thermal evaporation. For instance, 
in an e beam a large amount of energy is supplied to the target material thus materials having high melting temperature can also be evaporated using this technique also e beam evaporation process involves heating of only the source material so very low degree of contamination from the crucible occurs as compared to that in thermal evaporation the next technique for the vacuum deposition of thin film or the vacuum thin film deposit unit is the molecular beam epitaxy or the mbe technique mbe is a technique to deposit monocrystalline film epitaxy means the growth of crystalline layers on crystalline substrate so mbe involves the epitaxial growth where the interaction of one or more molecular or atomic beams that occur on the surface of a heated crystalline substrate mbe is performed in ultra high vacuum that is of the order of 10 to the power minus 11 tor it is a very slow growth process so very precisely control over the major compositional variations and impurity incorporation can be achieved using this technique now there are two types of epitaxy one is the homo epitaxy meaning substrate and material are of same composition and they are used to fabricate layers with different doping levels the second type of epitaxy is heteroepitaxy in which substrate and material are of different kinds like gallium and arsenide this is used to fabricate integrated crystalline layers of different materials in molecular beam epitaxy process or the mbe process the term beam means the evaporated atoms do not interact with each other or the chamber of walls or with other vacuum chamber gases until they reach the wafer or the substrate epitaxial growth takes place due to interaction of molecular or atomic beams on the surface of a heated crystalline substrate the vacuum system consists of a stainless steel chamber the pumping system usually consist of iron pump rotary pump turbo molecular pump and cryogenic pump for the pumping of specific gas species ultra high vacuum is used to obtain sufficiently clear epi layer mbe generally has application in manufacturing of heterojunction bipolar transistors used in satellite communication electronic and optoelectronic devices like led or in the construction of quantum wells quantum dots quantum wires and low temperature superconductors plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition or pcvd as the name suggest it is a chemical deposition technique in this process thin films of various materials can be deposited on substrates at lower temperature than that of standard chemical vapor deposition in pcvd processes deposition is achieved by introducing reactant gases between parallel electrodes that is a ground electrode and an rf energized electrode the capacitive coupling between the electrodes excites the reactant gases into plasma which induces a chemical reaction and results in the reaction product being deposited on the substrate the substrate which is placed on the grounded electrode is typically heated to 250 degree celsius to 350 degree celsius depending on the specific film requirements in comparison 
सीवीडी टेक्निक रिक्वायर्स 600 टू 800 डिग्री सेल्सियस द लोअर डिपोजिशन टेंपरेचर्स आर क्रिटिकल इन मेनी एप्लीकेशंस वेयर सीवीडी टेंपरेचर्स कुड डैमेज द डिवाइसेस बीइंग फैब्रिकेटेड द फिगर गिवन हियर शोस द स्कीमैटिक और द लेआउट ऑफ द पी सीवीडी डिपोजिशन सिस्टम in which we can see the gas inlet top electrode then there is a substrate holder and there are pumps to create the vacuum typically pcvd is used to deposit silicon nitride silicon dioxide silicon oxynitride silicon carbide and amorphous silicon silane that is the silicon source gas is combined with an oxygen source gas to form silicon dioxide or a nitrogen gas source to produce silicon nitride silicon dioxide and silicon nitride are dielectric or insulating materials commonly used in the fabrication of electronic devices to isolate multiple conductive layers capacitors and for surface passivation these films are also used for encapsulation to protect devices from corrosion by atmospheric elements such as moisture and oxygen so students let us summarize what we have learned in this module in this module we have learned about different techniques which incorporate high vacuum in order to deposit thin films for numerous applications each of these techniques has its own advantages and disadvantages we learned in detail about these techniques one by one and saw their advantages and disadvantages for example thermal evaporation is simple and cheap but there is considerable amount of waste of source material during the process while in electron beam evaporation multi layer deposition is possible but it is a very difficult to control the deposition rate now pld has the advantage that it maintains the stoichiometry of the target material thereby making it the best suited technique to deposit complex materials on the substrate in the same chemical composition as they are in target material but the only major disadvantage it has is that the uniform deposition occurs only in a very small area that is approximately around 1 cm square so based on the pros and cons different deposition techniques are used to fabricate thin films of various materials towards the various applications Thank you.